Thomas, Walk and Talk 2, here to feed the elect. Uh, this lesson we're going to talk about our darkest hour, and that being this devil finally moves, finally uh, moves on the people of the Lord, like it says in the book of uh, Esdras, and uh, that being us, because we have uh, the testimony of Yahweh Shai being this truth. And those that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai are the enemies of this government, the enemies of the so-called white man. Just like 2,000 years ago, Yahweh Shai had the testimony of his father, and he was the enemies of what? Or he was the enemy of the Roman Empire. So America is just an uh, extension of the Roman Empire. We that have the truth, we have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. And remember what Yahweh Shai said. He said, the world cannot hate you, for it hated me before it hated you. So that hate is going to show its form, or show itself in the form of um, these elites coming, trying to come after us. And uh, I equate that to being our darkest hour. You know, There's an old saying, it's always darkest before the dawn. Now the dawn is um, when Yahweh Shai comes back and destroys this kingdom. So it's going to get pretty dark out here, but the only advantage we have over the other people is we know the truth. But that still doesn't mean it's not going to get dark. I mean, all kind of destruction, all kind of uh, uh, race wars, race riots, you know. And, um, you know, us that's been in the truth for a while, our faith is built up to where be able to withstand it through the word of Yahweh Shem Shai, but you other brothers out there that are just coming in, it's important for you to notice, you know. So the first scripture I'm going to go into is um, the book of First Peter, the fourth chapter. Let's see what that says. First Peter 4, uh, 1 to 2. It says, For as much then as Yahweh Shai have suffered for us in the flesh, Arm yourself likewise. In other words, you gotta have that mindset. The same way Yahweh Shai suffered in the flesh is the same way we're gonna suffer in the flesh. Remember what Yahweh Shai said. He said the servant is not greater than his master. Yep. So Yahweh Shai is our master and we are his servants. So the same way he suffered, the same way we're gonna suffer. And the scriptures direct us to have that same mindset. For as much then as Yahweh Shai have suffered for us in the flesh, and that shows you Yahweh Shai was in the flesh. You got people that say, oh, he was a spirit. Nobody ever saw him. Well, how was, how was he able to suffer then? Spirits don't suffer. <laughs> it says he suffered for us in the flesh. So if he was in the flesh, that flesh had to have color. What color was that flesh? It was very dark according to the Bible, which means in, the, in today's equation, he would be a so-called black man, all right? And that's called extrapolation, by the way. For as much then as Yahweh Shai have suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. Now that's directed to all you younger brothers that's coming in this truth that may be part of the elect. You're supposed to have that same mind. So when you're suffering in righteousness, be glad, brothers. Because the spirit of Yahweh Shai resteth upon you. The spirit of Yahweh Shai is dwelling with you. For he that for he that have suffereth, or for he that have suffered in the in the in the flesh, have ceased from sin, hmm. that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of the Most High. And that's it. Once you come into this truth, the rest of your life, whatever it may be, whatever the Lord got. Whatever cup the Lord got for you to drink, the rest of your life belongs to Him. That's right. All right, Yahweh Shai paid that ransom for you in His blood. So all these guys that came in the truth and left the truth, basically they 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 uh, uh, welched on, um, for lack of a better word, they uh, turned their back. Yeah, they turned their back and they they they, they didn't show no integrity. Or no honor to the fact that Yahweh Shai died for them or, or paid a ransom for them. Yep. 
they didn't they counted it as a like the scriptures say they counted it as an unholy as, thing. as an unholy thing they did they were careless about it you know they made light of it they made light of it now the point that I'm making the reason why I brought the scripture out it says arm yourself likewise with the same mind for he that have suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin the point I want you to direct your attention to is arm yourself likewise with the same mind so part of our suffering is when this devil tries to totally implement the so-called new world order which is directly against what the scriptures are speaking about remember the head of the so-called new world order is the so-called Jew and when you look at books like the Talmud which is supposed to be the book of the so-called Jew is directly against what the scriptures are saying you want to know why they're passing all these unjust laws? It goes back to the Talmud. Because there's certain quotations in the Talmud that says that um, it says that a Gentile, which they call us Gentiles, that he's no he's not worth more than a beast. In other words, that's what they look at us as, as beasts, these so-called Jews. And they're the ones that uh, they're the ones that, that are at the spearhead of this so-called New World Order. It tells you that in, uh, in uh, Psalms 83. That's right. Edom is the first one. And they're the ones that's trying to destroy us as a nation. Like he quoted Psalms 83. And again, in the book of Revelation 2 and 9, it says that they're the synagogue of Satan. Now, that's really referring to, really, when you read that in the right context, it's really talking about guys like Yohanna. And guys like Comfy, they call themselves apostles, they call themselves followers of the Lord, but they're really false. They're really the synagogue of Satan. But you can use that scripture now to apply that to the so-called Jews, because they're the ones that's calling themselves Jews now. At the time it was written, Yahweh Shai, through the Spirit, when he was speaking to John, he was cursing out those false apostles. But now you apply it to the so-called white man because it fits it because he's the one running around calling himself a Jew and they're the ones that's at the spearhead of the so-called new world order and they're the ones that's going to try to bring that hell upon us in the, in our darkest hour so to speak that's why I brought the scripture out and it's really directed to you younger brothers who your faith have not really been built up yet All right you to put that into your mind. Arm yourself likewise, the same way how I suffered is the same way you're gonna suffer. All right, so Matthew 26, 36 to 38, uh, it says, Then cometh Yehoshai with them unto a place called Gethsemane. Now this is basically, this is when um, Yehoshai was with the 12 and um, this was pretty much his darkest hour because he knew what he had to do he knew he had to fulfill prophecy he knew he was going to be led to that cross and he, he didn't want to go to that cross man mm -hmm. you know the proof is in that same garden he prayed to his father that maybe can we do this some other way three times three times roughly paraphrasing so basically that was his darkest hour so if he went through his darkest hour we're going to go through our darkest hour Yep. Whatever that may be, it's up to the will of Yahweh Hashem Yeah, that's that's why it says. Um, that's why when he told the disciples to pray, he said, "Pray," and he said, uh, "Lead us down into temptation, but deliver us from evil." You know, because that was one of the key things that that he knew that that was going to come upon them. Mm -hmm. Like when the two disciples, the mother of the two disciples, John and James, mm -hmm. asked him if one of them could sit on his right hand and on his left. Mm -hmm. He said, "Can you drink of this cup that I'm that I'm drinking of?" And they say, "Yeah." He said, Are you surely going to drink of that cup? That's right. You know? That's and that's right. what we were just discussing just now, that you got these, these guys that call themselves leaders of Israel. They're not getting Israel prepared. No, they're, they're not making up the hedge. Them. Yep. Like the scriptures say, you have not made, that's in uh, Ezekiel. Yep. You have not made the hedge up for, to, for, the, for the house of Israel to stand in the day of battle. That's right. Something like that. You, you'll see the scripture anyway. Yep. But like Elder Ramla was saying, in the, during the break, you know, a real leader would do that, you know? Right. A real leader would inform you brothers of, of what's to come. 
and not every brother has the same level of faith. Right. So it's good to watch, you know, through the spirit of Yahweh about Shem Yahshai, it's good to watch, watch lessons like this to help, hopefully to help build up your faith. That's it. All right. This is all about faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. You know, the only weapon we have right now is faith. And the fact that we believe this word, we, be we believe it through faith, which is the gift that Yahweh Hashem Yahshua has given us. That's uh, Ephesians 2 and 8. All right, so we, we're talking about Yahweh Shai and his darkest hour, right? Yep. It says, Then cometh Yahweh Shai with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And I looked that word up, Gethsemane, it means pressed oil. So Yahweh Shai was the oil and he was being pressed, hard pressed in the spirit, as you, as you will hear in the scripture. And saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And that's another thing we're supposed to do, is to pray. It says to pray without ceasing. That is written. A man um, are always to pray and not to faint. What's that? A man are always to pray and not to faint. Right, men are always to pray and not to faint. That is written. Yep. Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. Now those of you that take the test, you should know who they are, the two sons of Zebedee. That would be uh, James and John. Notice he didn't take all the 12 with him. Right. Because those three were his, uh, were the closest to him. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. See? And began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Even our Lord, Yahweh was sorrowful yeah. And very heavy. He was hard pressed. And the name Gethsemane means pressed oil. That's what it means. So he was in the right place. That's Norman Norman right there. Uh, then said he unto, unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, which means wait, and watch with me. Um, now I'm going to jump down to the 45th verse. And uh, start from there. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. So that was the beginning of really of his darkest hour. This is when they came, Judas, right along with the rest of the soldiers, they came and they grabbed Yahweh Shai. And this was done very early in the morning. So, you know, some of you or some of us, man, we might be at home, wherever, and the government might just decide to, at that moment, to grab us up. All right? I'm just, I'm telling you reality, okay? Sure. I'm, I'm telling you things that other guys, you know, well, beginning with Elder Taha, he would, if the spirit jump on him, he would tell you the same thing, because that is scriptural. Yep. But these other guys, they, they don't think like that, you know? What if we always tell you about complacency? It's the worst enemy in this truth. Don't get too comfortable in this kingdom. We're only here like Abel, man. We're, we're just here for... Uh, transitory. Transitory. All right? For remember... Time, yeah. That's right. Remember what Yahweh Shai said. Or remember what the scripture said. That the rest of your life you live it for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. That's right. So whatever cup you have to drink, you're going to drink of that cup. The same way Yahweh Shai told... Uh, uh, what was that, John's mother? Yep. The same way how I to told John's mother, they shall surely drink of that cup. That's right. Right? <clears throat> so reading on, um, then come a feed to his disciples and saith unto them, sleep on now. Because remember, when you read the story, they couldn't stay awake. How I asked him to stay awake and watch with him while he went and pray that the father might give him some other cup to drink besides going on that cross. They couldn't uh, stay awake. They kept falling asleep. So finally, <laughs> showing you Yahweh Shai, the hard man that he was, finally when they approached, because Yahweh Shai knew they were coming, finally when they did approach, Yahweh Shai said, okay, you guys want to sleep? Go ahead and sleep right now. 